Okay, everyone. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this wellness webinar. Uh, my name is Malia Blake. I'm a staffer in the Congresswoman's office. Thank you for joining this wellness webinar. I will be moderating this event. This event is being recorded. Feel free to follow up with any questions or concerns by calling the Congresswoman's office phone number. I will post that number in the chat, but it's also 310-831-1799. Once again, 310-831-1799. And I will now turn it over to Congresswoman Barragan. Thank you, Malia. Hello and everyone. <clears throat> Thank you so much for joining us on this wellness webinar. I'm so excited. Um, I'm outside in the beautiful outdoors here, keeping a distance in a backyard. I'm a firm believer that mental health care is necessary. In this stressful and uncertain time, I wanna make sure you have the resources that you need to stay healthy. First, I wanna thank our guest for joining us on this so, so important webinar to share resources that can benefit your overall health and well being. First, we have Jackie Cox and Erica Melbourne. They're from the Los Angeles County Department of Mental Health. Then we have Margie Harper and Dr. Tamika Henry, are from the National Alliance on Mental Health, Mental Illness of the Los Angeles South Central Division. And Nerubi James from Nerubi's Positive Yay! Energy. Yes. We need positive energy. Thank you all yes. for joining this event. Now, our district and nation have been through a lot this year. As COVID-19 cases are on the rise once again, millions are unemployed, small businesses are struggling, and people across America are taking to the streets to call for social justice and an end to police brutality. Navigating this climate can be confusing, and scary. And with social distancing guidelines in place, it can feel like there aren't as many outlets or resources available uh, than usual. I hope that this webinar allows you to gain necessary tools and resources that you can use from the comfort of your own home and in our community. So before I turn it over to Jackie and Brandy, I want to share a few important reminders. You may have heard this week Governor Newsom strengthened the self-distancing guidelines, closing many indoor activities to help slow and to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Uh, so please keep aware of that. Now also remember to wear your mask. I brought a couple of my favorite masks here today um, to just share with you all. Uh, so remember that when you go out to wear your mask in public and whenever possible, refrain from activities that include individuals outside of your immediate family, um, or those who may live with you. This simple action will help save lives. A reminder that free testing is still available for all individuals in LA County to schedule an appointment to get testing in your area. Visit the link displayed on the screen or call 211. And let's not forget about the 2020 census. You need to get counted, we must get counted. It's still taking place, it's important your household and be counted to ensure that our community receives our fair share of federal funding. So let me give you an example of why being counted is so important. I represent a district that's roughly 700,000 uh, 700, um, people in California's 44th district. But if only 300,000 people are counted, the district will only receive funding for 300,000 people. That means less money for our schools, our hospitals, roads, and other vital services, um, like our food programs at school as well. So visit the link on the slide to make sure you're counted or call 1-800-923-8282. So with that, I will now turn it over to Jackie Cox and Brandy Johnson from the Los Angeles County Department of Mental Health. Thank you for joining us today and be well. Thank you, Congresswoman. So I'll go ahead and unmute myself. Ms. Cox, I know, was joining us. I wanted her to introduce herself. And but she's saying right now, Malia, she can't find the information. So I think she might kind of come on a little bit later. But in the interest of time, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Erica Melbourne. 
I'm a mental health training coordinator with the Los Angeles County Department of Mental Health. I support service area six, which is one of the largest areas within the service area of African American and Latino community members and consumers. So can you go to, and I wanna talk a little bit about wellness. So if you can go to the next slide, please. So I wanna start with just kind of having a basic discussion about what is mental health. Mental health, um, many of you may not know, includes our emotional, psychological, and our social well-being. It influences every aspect of our lives, how we think, feel, and act about anything that we come in contact with. It determines largely how we handle stress, how we make decisions, it, um, how we relate in interpersonal relationships with other people. It affects all aspects of our life. And many may think that mental health problems are things that only impact adults or older adults, but actually your mental health and your constitution and how your, your well-being starts from infancy up through older adulthood. So as from the point when a, one, a child is conceived or in utero, things that a mother may experience during her pregnancy all affect a child's mental health. So oftentimes you may have children that are born that come um, already with predisposed to trauma and other situations due to what happens in utero or whatever the mother may be experiencing. So mental health is an important aspect of all of our lives. And if you can go to the next slide for me, please, Malia. So I thought it was important to talk about the wellness wheel and our individual wellness since this is a wellness webinar. What you'll see is that there are seven different components that build into your individual wellness ranging from emotional, intellectual, physical, social, environmental, financial, and spiritual. So I'll talk a little bit about each one just to give some examples of how it is important to your overall individual wellness. So from an emotional aspect, because most times when people think about mental health, they think automatically it's something emotional. Well, it can be something as simple as maintaining your individual wellness at an emotional level is about proper sleep, it's about your ability to ask for help and how you manage stress within your life. Related to intellectual wellness, it's about how you stay engaged in learning. So just thinking about once you complete school, most folks think, well, once I graduate from high school or once I complete college, then I'm, on, I'm pretty much set on my, in, my wellness as it relates to my intellectual capabilities. But it's actually bigger than that. So especially during this time when we're all sort of restricted on what we're able to do, what becomes really important is that we keep ourselves abreast about what's happening in our world, that we read the newspaper, that we keep ourselves interested in books, and that we continue to just read for pleasure and to strive and increase our intellectual capabilities and our knowledge, and that taps into our overall wellness related to intellectual abilities. Now related to physical. I know with our social distancing, a lot of people are feeling angst about, oh, well, can I go out? Are there things that I can do? You can still walk in your neighborhood. You can still go on different trails. You can still do things to be out, to get outside. It's not good for you just to kind of stay in your house and be a complete recluse because that can lead to you not feeling well overall. So put your mask on as the Congresswoman mentioned and make sure you have your mask on when you go out for your walks, even if it's just 30 minutes for a day. Making sure you're keeping your bodies moving, eating well-balanced diets. I know a lot of us are joking about the Corona 15. You don't have to have the Corona 15. We can all talk about being Corona lean and in doing that, that means we get out and just be, be active with our physical selves. And since um, many of us may have some angst about going out and eating foods that may have a way for you to kind of do things within your family and you guys are all cooking meals together. So it's about making sure you're managing your physical wellness as well. Related to social wellness, that becomes increasingly important since we are not able to kind of gather together, have parties like we used to do, graduations and other things like that. We have to become more creative about how we stay socially connected with one another. So we do have social media platforms. We have Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, and all those other kind of things. So those are some great things that kind of, kind of help you stay connected. We have smartphones that we can use for FaceTime. Those are things that kind of help increasing us and in developing our relationships. Because as I talked about before, if you have problems with interpersonal relationships and how you relate to one another, that 
also impacts your overall wellness in related to a social sense. But I will also talk about a little bit later how too much of social media can also be a detriment to your mental health as well. Now, related to environmental aspect, since we all now have more time, this is the perfect time to do spring cleaning for months on end. So you don't need to feel like you need to be rushed just to do it in the springtime. We now have extra time. The governor, thank you so much, has given us the opportunity to spend more time decluttering our space. So we wanna make sure we keep our minds clear. Let's also declutter our spaces. You can also, um, a lot of the schools are serving lunches to kids and there's different community programs that are happening. You can volunteer your time. So that's in helping your environment doing what you can to help others because we're all in this together. There are a lot of many commercials about we'll get through this together. And the way for us to get through this together is for us to rely and help and support one another. Related to our financial wellness, this becomes increasingly important because many of us are, people are being laid off of their jobs, people's hours are being cut and other things such as that. So this is really a time for us to focus on living within our means. And what that means is that we have to have a hard look at about, at, so if we look at like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, what is it that I actually need and what are those things that I want? And making sure we're focusing on what our actual needs are, that will ensure that we're wellness in the financial aspect. There may be things that we have to wait on getting because we need to make sure we have food and adequate nutrition within our refrigerators that feed into our physical wellness. So all these things kind of fit together, but it's really important that we be a good consumer of our resources and our finances. And lastly, our spiritual wellness is a process of you just kind of looking at what you believe and what you um, also, what guides and guides your life, what values you have. So it becomes really important that we explore our spiritual selves and figure out whatever it is that you decide to your spiritual faith but relying on that to give you the strength to get through each day. And so if you are in alignment with all those things, then things will stay balanced for you within your life. However, if one of those things comes out of sync, if you can go to the next slide for me, Malia, then you may be in a place where you're wondering, okay, so why are things out of sync in my life? Why am I isolating from people? Why is it that I'm sleeping more than I usually sleep? Why am I eating more food than what I usually eat? I don't have motivation. I'm always irritated and annoyed easily by others. I tune out, there's, I, there's nothing I wanna do. I don't really wanna take a shower. If you're noticing for yourself that you're engaging in behaviors that are not normal for you, so you can't kind of compare yourself to your neighbor or your someone who's living in your household. You got to think about what's normal for me. So like if I was talking about myself for Erica, what's normal for Erica? What is it that she would be a normal pattern or behavior for her? And if I start to engage and be patterns or start to feel differently about myself than I had been before, then those are times where I need to think about there's something within my wellness that's out of sync. And so in those instances, that's where you should think about seeing a therapist. Now, as I mentioned before, how mental health goes back to even in the place of in utero, because there may be traumas from childhood or a woman's pregnancy that lead to a child being more predisposed or at risk for trauma or situations where they have a more difficult time processing situations. So in that, those are times when you should see a therapist. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what resources are available through the Los Angeles County Department of Mental Health. If you can go to the next slide for me, Malia. So where you can go for help, if you're feeling out of sync, if you're feeling like you need someone to talk to, one of the great resources that we do have is the County of Los Angeles Department of Mental Health. I know you see on the screen our mission, which is really long, but what I want to highlight for you, the main important things about our mission is that we inspire hope, well-being, and recovery. Those are all the things that we want to ensure that we make sure anyone who's accessing services within our county system, that they have hope, well-being, and recovery. Those are the things, the tenets that we focus on. And we promote independence and personal recovery from life situations that they may be going through. And we want to make sure that folks are also engaged and connected with their family and resources and their community. So those are our kind of our basic tenets that we focus on. We have a 24-hour, access line, which is 
854-71-7771. You can also text, if you don't remember that number, you can text to LA to 741-741. So it's really easy, 741-741, text LA, and you'll be able to get access information that you may need. The other thing I wanna to talk to you all about is a resident of Los Angeles County, we also have something that's called Headspace. It's on the next slide, Malia. So Headspace is a mindful and med mindfulness and meditation app. So you can access this on your tablet, you can access it on your laptop and also on your smartphones. It provide, provides mindfulness and meditation exercises that are very helpful to many people. They have over 40 courses within this app. It's completely free. It's through a partnership with the Los Angeles County Department of Mental Health. And as I mentioned, it's free access to all residents. Their information about how to link, how to access the link is be available in this PowerPoint slide, as you can see it available here. Try it out. It's free through the end of the year and it may even extend beyond that. But right now that's a good resource for you. It can give you um, sleep and meditation exercises to kind of help your mind relax. It also has um, techniques and, and many meditations that you can do at any point in time where you're feeling as though you're out of sync. The next thing I wanna also call your attention to, and it's on the next slide, Malia, and I provided access and resources to um, the Congresswoman about Community Agents of Change. It's a ment community mental health resource guide for service area six and service areas eight. But again, if you're coming into the county system, we are not turning anyone away. So if you're feeling like you're out of sync and you need someone to talk to, this is also a great resource for you as well. So make sure you look at that. And then I've also included a wellness guide from Black Women for Wellness. There is a link compressed within this file, but the link also the actual document was sent to Malia as well to make available to you all. So please access it. It has daily wellness tips, journaling prompts, things you can do for physical activities. It has a playlist and other things like that. So just shopping tips, it's great. It's a very, very great resource. Next slide, Malia. The last thing I wanna talk about with resources that we do have also the, in, within service area six, the healing center. So it's a community healing and trauma prevention center. I've sent Malia the July calendar and I can continue to send her that calendar information so she can make that, um, that resource available to you. But they offer a lot of virtual online classes. And so in order to get added to their email list, you can call MLK Healing Center at ph.lacounty.gov. They can add you to the distribution list and they will send you a monthly calendar. It's both available in English and Spanish that will give you the information you need to know about their yoga classes. There's something that's called Pro Project Fatherhood, Mindful Meditation. They have cooking classes. There's a lot of great information that's on there. So I wanted to leave you all with a few tips before I conclude. Next slide, Malia. So the tips, remember I talked about how it's important to have a social wellness? Well, one of the things that becomes really important, especially now since we're just inundated with information and many of us may have more access or time to watch television or view certain things, just be cognizant of how much time you're spending in watching or taking in current events through social media and other news outlets. Because it's easy to become overwhelmed. It's easy to, to become stressed or be feeling more anxious because of all the information that you're gather, getting. Yes, information is good, but sometimes information overload can lead you to feeling more anxious and depressed and have you where you're needing to call someone to seek mental health support. Now, if you're feeling that way, please do it. Please call. Please know that there's no danger and that you should not feel, ever feel shamed about asking for help. But the thing is, you need to make sure that whatever information you're receiving is from a trusted source. And also take breaks. So when you need to, when you've been at home for a couple hours, it's good for every few hours to get up and just kind of walk around, to get up and just stand up or stretch, do some stretching in your house. Or go take a, make sure you're taking a walk every day, whether it's at the beginning of the day, the middle of the day, or at the end of your day. Taking breaks with, from the things that you're viewing and don't just kind of do, just sit and just spend 18 hours a day just taking in information. That is not healthy at all. And also create a safe space where you can express your feelings. You don't want to keep everything. It's okay to talk. It's okay to cry. It's okay to scream. It's okay to be frustrated. 
but have resources and folks or support systems within your life where you can do that. And so you can call people on FaceTime and just say, I just want to just yell and just can you, are you okay with that? And so make sure you have supports within your life to do that. And if you don't have those supports, those resources that I talked about earlier, those are some things that you can lean on and get that information and have that space where you can do it. And please use your support systems. It's really important this time. We Just because we can't be physically next to each other doesn't mean we're supposed to be distant and not connected. This is a time for us to be even more connected. And I know I was talking, sharing with a friend that I feel more connected now to people than I did before. So I'm, you got to look at it in a positive way. Yes, this has altered and how we do life, but I think there's a lot of things that are within this experience of COVID that are changing our lives for the better. And I just want to end on that. Ms. Cox, did you have anything that you wanted to add? Uh, no, but I, I do appreciate you being there to give the information, but it's great. I was so elated that we had an opportunity to participate. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, Malia, for your time. I wanted to make sure I didn't take up too much time. So. No worries. Thank you for sharing all of that information, Dr. Melbourne, and for joining Ms. Cox. So we're going to turn it over now to Ms. Marjorie Harper and Dr. Tamika Henry from NAMI with the Los Angeles South Central Affiliate Chapter. Um, they're from the National Alliance on Mental Illness. And I do want to mention before I turn it over to them that all of the information on today's webinar will be posted on the Congresswoman's website. So all the information in the PowerPoints and the slides that the county shared, we will make available to everyone. Um, and then we'll answer any questions at the very end if we have time, but I'll turn it over to Dr. Tamika Henry and Ms. Marjorie Harper. Hi, Marjorie Harper. <laughs> Hi, Ms. Jackie Cox, how are you, darling? <laughs> when I looked up and saw you, I thought, how beautiful, so great. I'm so glad you're involved here. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, in light of the time, I want to make certain that we get started. Is that all right with you, Ms. Harper? Yes, it is. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully you can see it. Um, just a second. Let's go back here and share this. There we go. Perfect. I am going to talk to you and our time left here um, is about pandemic proof your health. The keys to manage stress, anxiety, and boost your immune system. So I'm going to make this a little bit more abbreviated, but I guarantee you, you will get something out of this that you can use right now, today. The time is now, and it's important that we understand we have so much going on with the with COVID-19 and the different things that's going on. We're closed, we're open, we're closed, we're open, and that anxiety, that stress that goes behind it is really... Um, sometimes disenabling people. So with that being said, it's important that we pandemic proof our health. I am Dr. Tamika Henry. I'm a medical director at Unlimited Health Institute. I'm an affiliate of NAMI South Central Los Angeles, and I am thrilled to be with you on this webinar regarding wellness. I talk about wellness all the time. I think it's important. So I hope you are tuned in and ready to go and really talk about what can we do right now. And what I have for you is how to stay at home and stay on track during a pandemic. If this is something that you can truly relate to, just start thinking about, okay, what can I do? You know, you've been wondering, what should I eat? What should I, what should I be looking out for? Well, I have something for you. And what we're going to cover is something called the basics. And I want you to remember this mnemonic because I'm going to take you through it so that you understand it. First and foremost, we're going to talk about the body, attitude, stress, your immune system, connection, and staying safe. Now, as we move through this, the B in body, the first how I want you to look at this is dealing with sleep. Do you not know that the ideal hours of sleep are from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m.? I know, many of you are like, really? Yes, really. 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. is truly the ideal hours of sleep because it allows your body to repair and restore. And I know you're wondering like, oh, I don't know about this, but if I pick up my cell phone and show it to you, you immediately are like, you have your cell phone, you charge it, you make sure it has an 80, 90%. The same way you're so well ready to charge your cell phone, I need you to recharge your body. And your body recharges with sleep. And sleep is so essential, especially as we're thinking about different issues as it relates to mental health. But health in general, we all need great sleep. Again, ideal hours of sleep, 
10 p.m. to 6 a.m. If you're not there yet, let's work towards it. Next, let's talk about exercise. And I always joke with my clients about this because they're like, oh no, not exercise. That's the bad word. It's not a bad word. I need you to think about this. Exercise is focusing on movement. What do you like to do? Are you someone who likes to walk? Are you someone who can sit in a chair and just shrug your shoulders up and down or move your legs up and down as if you're walking? Are you someone who likes to dance? Are you liking, do you like to roller skate? Whatever the case may be, your body is designed to move. Now you may have difficulty where you're saying, you know, I don't move that well. But if what you can move, I do want you to move. Basically, I tell my clients, get up and find your groove, whatever that groove may be. If it's music that makes you want to move side to side, then listen to the music. If it's something, if it's just sitting outside like our congress congresswoman is right now, then sit outside and move because your body needs it to really help protect you, especially when we're trying to pandemic proof our health. So I tell you, if you don't like exercise, you don't like the word movement, just get up. Next, let's talk about body and food. Okay, I take my time here because food has so many things associated with it. Now, us being in California, everybody, we can get raw, non-GMO, we can get um, any and everything here in California. But I want you to think about this, eat the rainbow. When I talk about eat the rainbow, think about colors, making sure there's color on your plate. Cut out the carbs and decrease your sugar. I know right now during the pandemic, think about it like this. The past hundred days happened to us. Okay, we didn't know, we didn't understand, but now what are you going to do different for the next hundred days? We now know that there are some changes that's going on, but we need to do what we can do to help support our health. We can choose to cut out carbs. We can choose to shut out, cut out sugar and we can increase the amount of protein that we eat with our bodies. Now, one other thing that I like to point out is drinking water. Water is so important. If you could think back when you went to a basketball, football, my son plays ice hockey, ice hockey game, whatever, and you hear somebody going water, 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 water. Yes, it was expensive, but yes, it is essential. Water is so essential to flush out toxins. It helps you go to the bathroom. It helps with your skin. It is so good for your body overall. So when you're thinking about your body, more water. And my clients come up with all kinds of, what about tea? Yes, herbal tea. What about soup? Yes, soup. But getting liquids throughout your body to help flush is essential to your well-being. Now let's talk about attitude, the A in basics. What is your focus on right now? Are you dealing with situations, you know, some people have lost their jobs. Some people are dealing with um, a loss of a loved one where they weren't there for them um, during this time of the pandemic. But I want you to change your focus. I want you to start thinking on what has been the good throughout this. Have you been able to do more self-care? Have you been able to focus on your family? Have you been able to focus on things that you wouldn't normally do? We just heard Dr. Melbourne talking about cleaning out certain aspects of your home. Are you cleaning out part of aspects of your home? Changing your attitude, changing your focus is definitely essential to your overall well-being, your overall mental health. And I always talk about a gratitude journal. What are you thankful for? And some people don't like journaling. I just say this, try it. Just try it. Even if it's as simple as writing a note in your um, phone in the notes section, what are you thankful for? It could be as simple as I'm thankful for um, I have a great smile or I'm thankful for uh, a roof over my head. Start simple. Just writing that in there because it helps to uh, rephrase what may be going on around you. So I want you to think about the gratitude journal. It's important that you look at it. And then again, when you write it, remember it's there. And then this is a new norm for us. It's okay. And it's okay to have your moments. And I tell people, you can visit pity, but you cannot live there. If you're going to visit it, it's all right. But walk away after a period of time like, you know what? I'm not going to stay in this attitude. Change your focus. Next, the S in basics is for stress. Now, when you're under a lot of stress, you know what happens? You're tired. You gain weight. There's increased likelihood of being anxious. There's more depression. There's even a problem with having issues with sleep. And we've already talked about the ideal hours of sleep, but if you're not getting enough rest, it really starts to manifest in your health. You can have elevated blood pressure, your blood sugar can go up, your cholesterol can be out of control. You can have problems with concentrating. So I'm focusing in on stress here because we're dealing with mental health and this is an issue. If we can get your stress under control, it really will help your overall well being. You heard about Headspace. I love of Headspace as an app because it helps you to really hone in and quiet the mind. And a lot of times, many of us have a hard time quieting the mind. So having different apps on our phone that help will really help 
monitor or control our stress level. And when you have stress issues, it can impact how you're digesting food. For instance, you can have a person who's completely healthy, you know, they're, they're like eating their greens and they're eating their veggies and they have their protein and they have their water and they're um, having their um, different carbohydrates on their plate. But if they're not getting adequate sleep and they're under a lot of stress, they will not be able to digest that healthy food food, no matter how healthy their plate is. So I encourage each and every one of you to get a handle as much as possible on your stress. And the crazy part about it, did you not know that stress can cause you to gain weight? And we already heard about the COVID-15. So let's go with the COVID lean or how about COVID stay the same? All right. So this is truly, truly powerful for you. There's even, um, the idea of dealing with immune health. So we're going down that mnemonic of basics. When we're talking about immune systems, that's how your body fights. That's how it's saying, you know what? I'm here for you. I'm fighting for you. I really want you to understand there are ways that right now today you can actually boost your immune system. Whether or not you know that, now you do. You know that there are some things you can do today to help boost your immune system. And you may be saying, you know what, Dr. Tumika, what are you talking about? Hold on, let me give you some immune boosters. First and foremost, colorful fruits and vegetables. Literally, it's a recommended eight servings per day. But if you're eating none and you go to one to two, I am ecstatic. Believe me, I am beyond ecstatic. There's something in the fruits and vegetables called phytonutrients, which help fight against inflammation. And inflammation is what goes on in your body. And what happens is if I take the back of my hand and I scratch it and I keep scratching and I keep scratching, eventually the back of my hand is going to turn red. Eventually it's going to break down and it may start to bleed. Well, that's external inflammation. What I'm talking about is internal inflammation, headaches, gaining weight, joint pain, brain fog, all that going on, we can fight that with fruits and vegetables. That's something you can do today. And you know what? You have control over it. No one can control what you're putting in your mouth but you. And let's say now all of us, including myself, during this pandemic, I'm cooking now more than ever before. And I'm like, Lord Jesus, help me. So what can I do? What can you do? You can start to cook with garlic, onions, oregano, rosemary. These are natural spices and different things that can help boost your immune system. So just think about what you've been cooking with lately. Like, have I been cooking with that? And if you have been, congratulations and keep moving forward. The other thing you can do is eat fermented foods and that helps promote good bacteria in your gut. I talk about bacteria in your gut because many people are out there taking probiotics and things of that nature. Probiotics help with your gut. So when we're talking about immune boosting, these are some ideas. Now, when I think about the next immune boosting, many people always ask about vitamins. Vitamins, vitamins, vitamins. Vitamins are awesome. Vitamin A, it helps with your lungs. It also helps fight against COVID-19. Vitamin D, as in dog. This is what helps get your immune system in that sweet spot. So vitamin D, yes, we get it from the sun, but a lot of times we don't get enough. Even my patients who are outside, who are meter maids and contractors, their vitamin D levels are low. Ideally, you want about 5,000 international units of vitamin D in your body daily. And many of you are already aware of vitamin C. If you're aware of vitamin C, type in the chat box, I'm taking vitamin C, I'm taking vitamin C. Well, awesome. Vitamin C, anywhere from 1.5 to three grams per day. I mean, vitamin C rocks. It's awesome, you're familiar with it, but be aware, be aware, be aware. A lot of times vitamin C has sugar in it. So when you're taking your vitamin C, make sure it doesn't have a lot of sugar in it, okay? Now, um, minerals, zinc, selenium, mushrooms, these are all awesome. Another little hack for you. Selenium helps with your immune system, but do you not know you can get um, selenium from um, nuts? You know that? Brazil nuts, in specific, uh, particularly, Brazil nuts have selenium that actually help boost your immune system. So you're like, what can I do? I'm trying to get you to eat right. I'm trying to get you to think right because this helps your overall body. Now, connection. If we think about the basics, we've talked about the body. We've talked about the attitude. We've talked about stress. We've talked about the immune system. C is for connection. Oh, it's so important. There's so much going on. We can't hug each other. We can't give a high five. You barely can do an elbow. There's so much. But if you can stay connected, whether that's through social distancing at a park, social distancing with a hike, if that's through a Zoom call, FaceTime, Google Chat, Instagram, I mean, there's so many different, YouTube, there's so many ways to stay connected. But staying connected reminds you that you are not alone. 
We are not alone in this pandemic. We're not alone when trying to take care of ourselves. You are not alone in this whole process. So I want you to understand the value of remaining connected. And I have this screen up here like a gallery view because we can connect to so many different people in so many different ways, whether that's in Bible study, maybe that's in another way, you're in a, a book reading club. Just because we're not next to each other doesn't mean we can't connect. Connection is key to who you are. And if you're an introvert, just slowly come out, just slowly come out because you have such a valuable opinion, thought life that we all need and we want you to share. And then as I move on, I think about S and basic staying safe. I want to talk about this as a physician. When you wear your mask, I need you to understand it needs to go over the nose. I need you to put it over the nose, not just on the mouth. And I understand it's hard. I'm a hiker. I'm outside hiking on my trails. I wear a scarf and I wear it down when I'm walking because let's keep it real. It's hard to breathe. But when I see people coming, I have it up. So when you have thinking about staying safe, make sure you're wearing your mask correctly. Make sure you're washing your hands. Make sure you're keeping your social distancing and make sure you're smiling because there's so much to smile about today. And as I take, as I come to a close, I just want to say it's important that you understand unlimited thinking, unlimited you. As long as you know that you can do better, you will be better. I am honored to share this wellness with you. My practice is Unlimited Health Institute. I'm in Pasadena. I'm an affiliate of NAMI Los Angeles South Central. I am thrilled to be here with um, Ms. Margie Harper and truly help um, you understand the value of wellness. And it's been my honor, hopefully it didn't take too much time, but I can guarantee you, you won't forget the basics because the basics are real, the basics work, and I'm basically happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Henry and Ms. Harper. Super informative, I love your energy. So we're gonna turn to lastly, Nairobi James from Nairobi's Positive Energy. And she's gonna walk us through a guided exercise that we can all practice while we're at home um, working on our wellness. So I'll turn to you now, Ms. James. And you may have to unmute yourself. Hello? Okay, we can hear you now. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes? We can yeah. hear you. Oh, all right. Okay. Well, <laughs> good afternoon to everyone. And I would I like to uh, guide you through some exercises. First of all, I want to give thanks to my higher power, and I want to give thanks to the Congresswoman Nanette and her staff for an awesome opportunity. And second, I am uh, Nairobi James. I'm the owner of Nairobi Positive Energy Motivational Services. And I like to say this, ladies and gentlemen. On the count of three, I need everybody to say NPE. One, two, three. NPE. NPE. Nairobi Positive Energy. Can you hear me? Yes. Nairobi Positive Energy. It is an educational, motivational support service. So ladies and gentlemen, my purpose today is to stimulate your mind, rejuvenate your bodies, and relax you and motivate positive action. So let me tell you the benefits. It will improve your well-being and you will experience the five levels of health. Emotional, intellect, social, physical, and spiritual. And ladies and gentlemen, let me give you a preview the first one is to stimulate your mind. Second, to rejuvenate your body. Third is to relax you. And fourth, to relax, to motivate positive action. And fifth, we're going to close with a positive affirmation. So ladies and gentlemen, why don't we just jump right in? When I say jump right in, we're going to go with the first point, and that is to stimulate your mind. Now, I heard someone say earlier, thinking about something that you're grateful for. Well, ladies and gentlemen, think about that for a moment. What are one of the things that you're grateful for? You can type it in, or you can just verbally say it. And when you do, everybody else can know what it is you're grateful for, but not only that, you're helping somebody else realize what you're grateful for, and then they, too, can realize what they're grateful for. So on the count of three, 
I want you to think about what are you grateful for? One, two, three. Think about that. Now, taking a deep breath on the count of three. One, two, three. Taking a deep breath. And exhale. Release it and let it go. Now, ladies and gentlemen, can somebody share what they're grateful for? Hello? Hello? Does Ms. Harper want to share? Yes, Hi. I want to say that I'm grateful for today. I'm grateful for a day I've never seen before. And I, wow. and I yes. see in the chat, we have some individuals saying they're grateful to be alive, to be safe, to have their health, um, for their family, their home. Great. Okay. Now let me share with all of you what I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for each one of you spending this very moment with you right now, because we are in this together. So thank you. And that's why I'm so grateful right this moment. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to the second point, and that's rejuvenation. And what I would need you to do is just extend your hands upwards, your arms upwards towards the sky. And as you extend it upwards, give thanks, ladies and gentlemen. And on a count of three, you're just going to take a deep breath. One, two, three. And exhale, releasing your arms as they come down and just releasing your body. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with that thought in mind, I want you to think about when somebody gave you some good news, how did you react? So on a count of three, I just want you to strike that pose in the remembrance of that good news. On a count of three, one, two, three, just strike that pose where you was happy receiving that good news. Just taking a deep breath on a count of three, one, two, three, taking a deep breath and just relax your body. Now, think about your favorite dance move. Whatever your dance move is, just think about that move, that position. Just think about that for a moment. And on the count of three, I want you to strike that pose, whatever it may be. On the count of three, one, two, three, strike that pose. Okay, on the count of three, release it. One, two, three, let it go. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this brings me to my third point. This point, I want you to close your eyes, but wait, we're going to wait until three. We're going to close our eyes, and we're going to think about our favorite place. And with that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, the key is using all five of your senses, your touch, your smell, what you hear, what you see, and what are you feeling? in your favorite place. So on the count of three, close your eyes and think about your favorite place. One, two, three. Think about your favorite place using all five of your senses and taking a deep breath on the count of three as well. One, two, three. Taking a deep breath. Now exhale and release it and let it go. Now if some of you, please share what is your favorite place. On the count of three, I want you to open up your eyes and share your favorite place. One, two, three. What was your favorite place? I'll share first. Mine is the beach. I was touching the sand with my toes. I was smelling the soft air from the ocean. I saw eagles, and I heard kids' laughter in the background, and it was so good. It felt so good. So, ladies and gentlemen, share your special place, your favorite place. Please, on the screen, or you can verbalize it. I see some people, their favorite place was the beach as well, the ocean. So Mary Lee said Sunday dinner at her mom's. Another individual, Ruth, said Kauai, Hawaii, the Garden Isle. Another individual said church, Disneyland, the bluffs at Cherry Beach. I think the beach is a um, common denominator for a lot of us. Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, on our fourth point. Now, this time... I need you to think about somebody that you would tell something positive to. So let me say to the Congresswoman, 
Lynette and Mila, let me say to both of you, I appreciate this opportunity to present a burst of positive energy for everyone. And to everybody that's, everybody that's here, I want to say to all of you, I appreciate every last one of you for your time and your expertise. And all of you make a difference. Thank you. So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to take a deep breath with a positive thought with that thought in mind. One, two, three, taking a deep breath. And exhale. And ladies and gentlemen, as I'm about to close, we have to conclude it with a positive affirmation. And I wish I could see all of you because I have a body language to go with it. However, it goes like this. It's saying, I, you're making a statement, you're pointing to your chest. And then you said, I, then you say, I am. Am, you're taking your forearms and, and going down and you're making a statement saying, you're present, I'm here. And then powerful, you have both of your hands in front of you in your midsection and you bent over saying, I am powerful. So ladies and gentlemen, it goes like this. I am powerful. But before you say that, think about how powerful you really are. You're thinking about it. You are powerful. You make a difference. There's no one else like you, truly. Second, feel your power. Nobody can take your power unless you give it to them. And third, speak your power. So when we say, I am powerful, say it. And then putting it in action, that's your body language. You want to say, I am powerful. So ladies and gentlemen, on a count of three, we're going to say, I am powerful. And remember, you're powerful in what you think. You're powerful in what you say. You're powerful in what you feel. And ladies and gentlemen, you're powerful in your actions. Why just talk about it when you can be about it? So on count of three, we're going to say, I am powerful. Taking a deep breath first. One, two, three. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Now on the count of three, we're going to say, I am powerful. One, two, three. I am, am powerful. And ladies and gentlemen, one more time, but this time we're going to say it within ourselves. You know, that silent mode, but yet you have a positive self-talk. Well, this is the time you want to do positive self-talk and tell yourself, you are powerful. I am powerful. So with that being said, taking a deep breath. Exhale. Now, stand to yourself on a count of three, I am powerful. One, two, three. And ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude with that, take your power and make a difference with someone else so you can help them along the day. When you get into a point where stress is beating you down, when negative is seem like it's no end, think about this for a moment. Remove yourself and go help someone else. Call somebody and tell them you love them. And this way you're taking your mind off of you. It's always better when you extend yourself to somebody else that'll help you along the way. So ladies and gentlemen, that concludes my presentation and do have a positive day. If there's any questions, I will be delighted to answer them. Thank you, Nairobi James. Thank you so much, Ms. Nairobi. So we're almost at the end of our webinar, webinar now. If you have any questions that are, have not been answered yet, please remember to um, call our office and one of our staff members will be sure to get in contact with you to get your questions answered. Our office number is 310-831-1799. I'm gonna answer a few of the questions that I see in the chat, um, but please reach out if there's any questions that I do not get to address. So one individual asked which cities cover are under areas six and eight covered by the Los Angeles um, County Department on Mental Health. And so Dr. Melbourne shared with me 
that the cities included in its service areas six and eight are South LA, Lamert Park, the Crenshaw District, Watts, Compton, Paramount, Linwood, Carson, Gardena, Long Beach, Hawthorne, San Pedro, El Sangado, and Catalina Island. Um, so everyone, if you are a constituent in the 44th district, you will be in service area six or eight. And so if you reach out, um, to count to the county they should be able to assist you and they should be able to assist you regardless of your service area i do not see let me read through the chat to see any other questions before we go ahead and end this wonderful session um i see one individual ask for dr henry's contact she put it in the chat so i'll read out her email that's staff at unlimited health institute.com again staff at unlimited health institute.com and then i see one individual is asking in the future will you hold these at schools or in the spanish i do not know if we'll hold these at schools just because of um, everything going on in the current state of events we are going to translate this powerpoint into spanish and post it on the congresswoman's website um, so within the next couple of days you should be able to access this both in English and Spanish um, for all of our constituents that may be bilingual. I don't see any other questions at this time. Once again, please feel free to call our office if you have any questions. I want to thank all of our participants for joining us for today, for sharing their wealth of resources and their knowledge with us all, and just taking an hour out of your day to spend with our constituents um, and the members throughout the district. If anyone has any last um, things they want to state in these three minutes, I'll give you the floor. But other than that, we are going to end this webinar soon. And I don't think anyone has thank anything you. else. Um, so once again, thank you for joining this webinar. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And if you have any questions, you have the number. Please feel free to reach out. OK, have a good one. Thank you. Bye.